Hey y'all, today we're gonna be making crock pot sesame chicken thighs and it's gonna be good. And we're gonna do it all while having a whole lot of fun. Cooking me softly with his tongue, with his tongue. Welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with me, the good old boy. And today we are going to be making another dish from RecipesThatCrock.com. And it's going to be a little bit on the Asian-inspired side. You see, we're down here in Texas right now. And I've had my fill of all kinds of barbecue and things like that. But sometimes I'm just dying for some Chinese. And this is a low-carb recipe that we are getting adapted from bacon and butter. Which, that in itself is enough for me to want to buy the book. But it's a keto, a keto, I can't say it, ketogenic diet book. And uh, Chris is going to take this recipe and she wanted to adapt it to be able to be used in a slow cooker because that's how we're cooking 99.9999999% of our meals around here. And when I'm wanting Chinese, I know we're not going to be able to do the rice. And of course, a lot of that stuff is breaded. And frankly, I need to kind of get back on the low carb program because I'm not doing that good of a job right now down here. So I want Chinese, she wants low carb. We're a happy married family. We meet in the middle and this is what we're gonna do. And what you're gonna need for this recipe <clears throat> are the following in this adapted recipe. You wanna have eight bone in, skin on chicken thighs. That's right, bone in with skin, chicken. And you also wanna have some salt and some pepper, a quarter teaspoon a piece, however much you wanna use to season. You want one quarter cup of soy sauce. You want to have one quarter cup of shurgle, shurgle, shurgle free purple surple. Wow! I'm getting looks from the peanut gallery over there. Sugar free maple syrup. We're just going to use Mrs. Butterworth's syrup there. Uh, if you can find a sugar free maple syrup, have at it, be my guest. You also want to have two tablespoons of sesame oil. You want to have two teaspoons of minced garlic. You want to have two teaspoons of red wine vinegar. And you want to have one teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. Stop myself right there. We don't got no red pepper flakes because somebody forgot to get them at the store. So what I'm going to do is adapt myself with this recipe. And I've got some ground red cayenne pepper. All we're wanting to do is add a little bit of heat. So I'm just going to put a pinch of that pepper in there and then two teaspoons of sesame seeds right there. So what I want to do is put my book down. I have my Ninja slow cooker going on a saute feature, uh, the stove top feature on here on high, and I want to take a quarter cup of butter right here that I already pulled out and put her in the bottom of my slow cooker. And that slow cooker is hot, that butter is bubbling. And then what I want to do is salt and pepper my chicken thighs while I'm getting that butter hot. So a little bit of salt on the top of that skin. That'll give it a good flavor. And then I'm going to put that skin side down in that butter. And it's going to brown that chicken up real good. A little bit more salt there. Getting salt all over the kitchen. That's okay because you know what I say. I'll clean that up later. And then pepper one, two, three. 11, 12. All right, and I'm going to take that chicken, those chicken thighs, and lay them skin down into that butter, that hot, hot butter. So I definitely want to be careful. You know me, that's probably going to mean I'm going to burn myself here in a minute. Oh, yeah. You can hear that chicken sizzling. I'm just hoping I've got enough room here because these are some big thighs. I'm thinking that these chickens must have worked out. They got the chickens doing squats. Yep, I think I got just enough room. And these will shrink up too as they cook down a little bit. But all I'm going to do is let them sit in there. I'm going to go ahead and leave the lid off too so it doesn't steam that chicken. And clean up my workstation, wash my hands, and show you the next step in three, two, one. And the workstation has been cleaned up, hands have been washed, and now it's time to get on with the rest of the stuff that's going to make this chicken taste real good. So I've got my chicken down in there, and it's sautéing, browning up that skin, and then I'll flip that over here in just a little bit when I get this made up. But what I want to do is take my quarter cup of soy sauce, I'm 
and take that lid off of it this way. So a quarter cup in a bowl. You want a quarter cup of your sugar-free maple syrup. If I say it really slow, I can enunciate it properly to say it right. Otherwise, it comes out of circle fertile, purple circle. And no, I haven't been drinking. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, what I want to do is get two tablespoons of the sesame oil. I'm going to do that by eye because I can. If I can get, there we go. So two tablespoons, there's one, and a two. A little bit more because I like sesame. You want two teaspoons of the minced garlic. There's one teaspoon, and a two teaspoons. You want two, sp two teaspoons, see, I can't enunciate for nothing today. You got red wine vinegar. Oh, I didn't pop the top off of that either. Fire in the hole! Two teaspoons of red wine vinegar. There's one teaspoon. And a two teaspoons. That's going to give it that little bit of a sour taste. Woo! That smells good. That is strong, too. And like I said, we didn't have any red pepper flakes for heat. If you don't want the heat, omit this step altogether. Otherwise, I'm going to put in just a pinch of cayenne pepper, probably about maybe a quarter, maybe a half teaspoon, and that still might be strong enough for some. And then two teaspoons of sesame seeds. So I need to cut this open, or I should say open sesame. <laughs> I crack myself up sometimes. And I want two teaspoons. So. There's one, and there is two. And then before I mix that all up, I'm gonna take my tongs and check the bottoms of my chicken. Oh yeah, that's starting to brown up a little bit. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can multitask here and show you what my chicken is looking like. Can't record this time. Ooh. Fog it up a little bit. Let's wait for that to... Maybe I'll do it like that. There we go. There we go. And let me flip that chicken. You see it's starting to brown that skin up like that? Oh, yeah. We're not cooking this chicken up. All we're doing is crisping up that skin, browning up that chicken, getting those butter flavors all in there. Oh, look at that one. That one's gorgeous right there. But this one, that's looking real good. And if you notice, that one is getting more brown than that one. That just shows you sometimes there's an unevenness in the cooking elements. It doesn't matter what slow cooker you get. So I might want to rotate those, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But we're going to let those go ahead and cook like that. I think I will go ahead and rotate this bad boy over there. That way this one gets a little bit more heat too and browns up pretty evenly. Cooking me softly with his tongue, with his tongues. Oh yeah, those are beautiful. Alright, and now I'm going to take and just stir up this little mixture. I'm going to smell it too because now that, well that garlic sat in there, it's kind of soaked in that soy sauce and that red wine vinegar. Oh man. I wish we had smell vision y'all. You could smell the sourness that's going from that vinegar, and then you get that sesame smell that's coming from that sesame oil. That is amazing. Wow, wow, wow. And it's low carb, and it smells really good. It smells like a really, really, really high-end Chinese restaurant in here. I am excited, because I am ready for this. So now, we've let this cook for a little bit. Take my tongs and check the bottoms and I'm cooking this on the high setting so that it browns it up a little bit quicker. Make you, do it on the you can all yeah you can also my bosses tell me what to tell you here. I gotta tell you if you want to do this on a stove top you can do it on a high heat or a medium high heat in a skillet and do it just the same and then put it in any regular slow cooker. But I think that will be fine just like that. It's browned up on both sides, crisped up on that on that skin. 
So now I'm going to shut my browning feature off. And then I'm going to go ahead and set it to slow cook. And you want to set that on low for four to five hours. So slow cook. And I'm going to set that for five hours. I'm going to check it in four. And I'm just going to take this mixture. Stir it up a little bit. See if I can multitask one more time here. Because you know it always looks pretty when you do that pour on shot, right? I'm just going to take that mixture and pour it all over those chicken thighs. Just like that. Oh, yeah. And that flavor is going to soak in there all day long. Take my spatula and clean out. Make sure I get all that garlic and all those sesame seeds put on top of that chicken. And that's going to slow cook for four to five hours. In the meantime, I'm going to kick back and chill. And then when we come back, that will be done ready for one more step. If you want, if you don't, you can eat it just like this. But we're going to show you an extra step you can take as well as show you what I'm going to serve it with. I'm not even going to tell you. I'm just excited because I can't wait to make it. And we'll show it in three, two, one. And it's been four hours since we put the chicken in. Now it's time to lift the lid and see how we did. So let me grab my overhead there. And we look like this. Oh, it's going to be steamy. I'm going to be careful with that camera. Check that out. That is fully cooked chicken thighs, y'all. See all that garlic down the bottom. See how that chicken had browned up previously and now it's all juicy and succulent? Mmm. That's going to be good. We could eat it just like this. It'll be completely fine. But I'm going to take it one step further because it sounds good. And I'm going to grab my tongs and I'm going to go probably four at a time here since I've got eight. I'm going to go ahead and use my foodie and do just like we did with the garlic chicken. If you haven't seen that video, check it out because that was some really good chicken as well. And I'm going to go ahead and crisp this chicken back up because it sat in that moist environment, in that hot, wet environment. And so where you crisped up the skin, it's not going to be near as crispy now. So, gosh, I might be able to get all these babies in there. We'll see. My boss over there shaking her head saying, mm-mm, no, -uh, no, you won't. Air to circulate. You want the air to circulate, so don't. Don't do it. Don't just do it because I told you not to. Do it because my boss told me to tell you not to. But let's put those. Oh, those are fall apart, too, so you got to be careful. Yeah, those are starting to fall apart. Got to be careful with that, y'all. And I'm going to set this on the air crisp feature. Uh, do you have your little portable heater off there so we don't blow mm -hmm. a circuit? Okay. Air crisp. I'm going to go 360 degrees. And I'm going to go for five minutes. And I'm actually going to check it here in probably about three. So. Or they can broil at home if they don't have a foodie. I know. Okay. Sorry. They know that. Did you know that? If you don't have a foodie and you still want it crisped up, just broil it. Just put it under your broiler for a couple minutes, three minutes, four minutes, however long it takes to crisp up that skin, see it get all bubbly, but not burnt. Don't burn your chicken. Don't ruin the chicken. You've come this far, and I'm going to cheat and taste the sauce. Mm -hmm. It tastes like sesame. That's really good. So, well, we could stand here and talk about it, or I could snap my fingers and it would be done in three, two, one. And five minutes has come and gone. Let's see how we did. I checked it at three. It, I mean, it's already cooked up, but it just didn't seem crispy. So we're going to test it. And I'll bring over the camera here so you can kind of see what these babies look like after five minutes under the air crisper. The air circulating around it. I see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that skin's crisped up really well. I could even let it go longer if I wanted to, to make it a little more crunchy, if you want a crunchy skin. Almost like you're having Peking duck. But... If it were chicken and sesame flavored. If it were chicken and sesame flavored, yeah. True. You didn't want to be in this video. Shush. <laughs> I'm going to take that really brown one there. Lay it on a bed of uh, fried cauliflower rice. Now, again, I wanted some Chinese. And I knew this is a good way to have Chinese without 
having all the carbs. So, but at the same time, you got to think this is not fried rice that I've got underneath this chicken. So if you're wanting fried rice, you're going to be sorely mistaken if you get this because it is not. That does not mean it is not good. Trust me, I had a bite of it a while ago and it's really good. So let's dig in real quick. Cut into my chicken thigh here. Oh, that chicken just falls apart. Like, it just melts in that fork. Let me get a piece of that skin. So if it sounds like a battle zone behind the, behind me here, my daughter's in the other room, and thankfully with the use of Wi-Fi, we're able to let her hook up with her friends back home and play a little Fortnite. So I told her, I said, Addie, I need you to not be yelling and screaming while Daddy's taping. She says, okay, and then she turns the TV up so you couldn't hear yelling and screaming. But, you know, I feel like... If I eat this right here, I'm leaving you guys all alone. So I'm gonna come see you. All right, check this out. You've seen the chicken. This is that fried rice cauliflower we're talking about. Looks like it's got some broccoli as well and some carrots. Makes it really crunchy. Chris threw in three eggs. In fact, if y'all want, if you want to see a video of this, put it in the comments down below. Yes, I'd like to see a video of how you make um, fried rice, uh, oh. fried rice cauliflower. If you don't, well then just don't leave a comment. But this is what it looks like going in my mouth. Oh, you can really smell that maple in there. That skin is crispy. That vegetable medley underneath has got a crunch to it. Mm. Oh yeah, that'll do. I can smell the maple more than taste the maple. I smell the sesame. But I can, yeah, I can really smell and taste that sesame and that garlic. Mmm. It's got that salt because of the soy sauce. That is really, really good. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Ain't none of that going to waste, y'all. That's good stuff. Mm mm mm. Oh, nope. I just tasted the maple. Mmm. Ooh, maple and sesame together. Good thing. Mm hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I almost forgot you were here. <laughs> I was enjoying dinner. Hey, y'all. That's good. Make that. And again, if you want to see how we do that fried rice cauliflower, leave a comment down below and say, yes, Mikey. And you got to say it just like that. <laughs> you have to. But anyway, if y'all like what you're seeing here, give us one of them. Give us a, th a thumbs up down below. Also, <laughs> piece of rice cauliflower stuck in my mouth. Also, make sure that you click the subscribe button down below if you want to be a member of the Croc Posse. And if you want to know as soon as we put up a new video, as soon as it gets up on the interwebs, all you got to do is click that little bell down below that we call the ding and whatever y'all do. Laugh often. Be good fair. And speak life. Bye. I'm a star. A croc star. Mm -hmm. Mm. If you want to see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think we're funny, Money, like the page